we've got breaking news out of Israel, where the prime minister and president are making an announcement. The Israeli president, has, uh, Reuven Rivlin, has just asked Benjamin Netanyahu to attempt to form the next government. I want to bring in NBC News' Matt Bradley live in Tel Aviv. Matt, what's this news mean? Well, what it means for Israel, uh, Ali, is that the rumors of Benjamin Netanyahu's political death were greatly exaggerated. All this talk about how he wasn't going to continue on. He's the longest serving prime minister in Israeli history. He's now been charged, as you mentioned, by the president with forming a new government. He assured us and agreed to provide for the surrender, and that's not occurred. This is CNN Breaking News. On June 17, 1994, O.J. Simpson became the most famous fugitive on the planet. Everybody was on the alert looking for a wanted double homicide suspect who happened to be a Heisman Trophy winner. David Gascon, the LAPD's chief spokesperson at the time, believed O.J.'s whereabouts wouldn't remain a mystery very long. I remember having a conversation and I told him directly, I said, you know how this is going to end up. Somebody's going to see O.J. Simpson out here. Somebody's going to see him out on the freeway somewhere. We're going to get the call. Highway Patrol. Yeah, um, I think I just saw O.J. Simpson on the uh, 5 freeway. He's heading north. Near Nicole Brown Simpson's grave, south of Los Angeles, the white Bronco is spotted. At the wheel, O.J.'s best friend and former teammate, Al Cowlings. Did you see him? Yeah, we both... Tell her... The truth! No way! If Jasmine found out I was really some crummy street rat. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today at the UN, President Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky were all smiles. Zelensky, a professional comedian, even cracked a joke. It's better to be on TV than by phone. Yeah. I think. <laughs> A wisecrack about the phone call they had back in July. That call, now the focus of an impeachment inquiry. Today, the White House released a summary transcript. At issue, whether President Trump pressured the Ukrainian president to investigate Joe Biden and his son after Hunter Biden landed a cushy spot on the board of directors of a Ukrainian energy company. Asked about it point blank. Any pressure from President Trump to investigate Joe, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? The Ukrainian president diplomatically demurred. That nobody push it. Push me. Yes. In other words, no pressure. For President Trump, no pressure is the new no collusion. No push, no pressure, no nothing. It's all a hoax, folks. It's all a big hoax. There was no pressure. It turned out to be a nothing call other than a lot of people said, I never knew you could be so nice. But Trump did not have such nice things to say about Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her decision to pursue an impeachment inquiry. She's lost her way. She's been taken over by the radical left. Unfortunately, she's no longer the Speaker of the House. Today, Washington digested the first bit of hard information. Withholding aid to an ally and then, quote unquote, asking for a favor to 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 essentially benefit yourself politically, not in the interest of the United States of America, but in the interest of your own re-election. So you don't believe that he held up the money because they're dirty or he wanted the Europeans to help and that he's just trying to get to the bottom of who interfered in our election in 2016 and there's reason to believe it started in Ukraine. Well, you know, I think, Chris, when you look at this, the first red flag is that his personal lawyer is there. That is not normal. That is not normal in a democracy. Yeah, this you could is have stopped normal. right there, Congresswoman. None of it's normal. And uh, Rudy told me on the show, he didn't go there about Biden. He did go there about Biden. He went there on his own, only told the president about all of this after the fact. Now we get a very different reckoning. He said he did it on his own. Now he says the State Department asked him to go. Um, I asked him if he went under color of authority of the president. He said no. Now it seems that he did. That's all screwy. How does it get us to impeachment? Well, one of the things that I think we see is that, first of all, he shouldn't have been there to begin with. Fair point. And, and whether he was there, whatever the guise is that he's saying, he should not have been there. Moreover, it doesn't even matter about his presence. The president of the United States in this transcript and has admitted 
himself to have brought Rudy Giuliani into the conversation with the president of Ukraine. And that in and of itself, it doesn't matter where he was physically, is a violation of our sworn duties and our oath to the Constitution of the United States. Any worry about, you know, look, you have so many ideas for the country, and I want to talk to you about what a just society is, not just as a hashtag, but how you see it as this kind of comprehensive basket. It's kind of New Dealy uh, mm-hmm. where you're going with this. Um, but so you're going to go out there with your country. I mean, obviously, you know, you've run your race, but as a collective party, are you worried that right now we haven't measured since the Ukraine stuff? Uh, really, we haven't measured since Rudy came on this show and really kind of escalated this whole process. But it was like 57 uh, 37 mm-hmm. against impeachment. Are you worried that there are people in this country who are looking for new leadership and new ways and more decency and less disaffection and that you're taking them down one of the darkest places you can go in politics? I'm not saying it's the wrong move, but are you worried about it hitting the wrong way with the people? Well, I personally do not believe in fulfilling my obligations to my job based on polling data. I think we need to do our job. And we've been elected and sent here by the people of the United States of America to fulfill all of our obligations under the Constitution of the United States. When it does come to polling, all of this polling, much of these polling numbers came out before this- 100% true. Really shattering allegation. True. And so that polling da- data is not reflective of, of a a shift that has united almost the entire Democratic caucus plus plus an independent member that has that was forced to leave the Republican caucus because of the the blatant uh, ignoring of this law breaking and rule breaking behavior out of this administration. So I think the ground has shifted. I don't believe in making decisions based on polling. I believe in our ability to organize the public, to educate the public, to talk to the public about why not just we as members of Congress must impeach the president, but why all people in the United States of America must recognize and understand that we need to put our country first before our our considerations of re-election. And that goes from members of Congress all the way up to the presidents of the United States. I also think it was particularly tasteless to for those who are grieving a mother, an MP, and a friend, to say that the best way to honor her memory is to deliver the thing that she and her family campaigned against, That's what which is Brexit. Said, I know he did, and I think, I think it was a un- very tasteless way of referring to the memory of a murdered MP, murdered by somebody who said Britain first, who is obviously of the far right tendency, but, which you could argue well, is being whipped up by this sort of language. My brother using words like surrender, capitulation, as if the people who are standing in the way of the blessed will of the people as defined by the 17.4 million votes in 2016 should be hung, drawn, quartered, tarred and feathered. And I think that is highly reprehensible language to use. And I hope that today in the Commons, we're recording this on Thursday, there will be some sort of deal on both sides, all sides, that this sort of thing is utterly dialed down.